watch your mouth or I'm gonna have some duct tape put on it. No. You gutted him like a fish in that apartment too. You were relentless, you stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed until he was dead. I agree with the family. I hope you die in prison as well. Camille Gamet terrorized her disabled boyfriend, Marcel Hill, and violently stabbed him to death. The judge said what everyone was thinking at her sentencing. Before I go further, I really appreciate your support in the Backstreet Crime Channel. If you like this video, hit the like button. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell so you will be notified of new videos. This story is about domestic abuse and murder. In 2013, Camille and Marcel lived together in Jackson, Michigan. They were an odd couple because they had very different personalities. As a result of this, their relationship was filled with difficulties. The victim. Marcel Hill, age 38, was described as friendly and childlike. He was a fast food worker and only had a high school education. He suffered from mental illness, cognitive impairment, and a physical disability. He received special services beginning as a young student. He spent much of his childhood in Chicago, but graduated from Jackson High School in Michigan and went for a while to Jackson Business Institute. He had been to prison twice and was a registered sex offender for convictions in 1992 and 2005, according to the Michigan Public Sex Offender Registry at the Michigan Department of Corrections. The Killer. Camille Gamet, age 31, did not have any disabilities, but she was known to be on drugs and had a violent and abusive nature. She had a troubled childhood and had been relocated to 13 different foster homes. Her mother was mentally ill and struggled with drug addiction. Camille was born in Michigan and lived in Iowa with adoptive parents. She was depressed and had been treated for mental illness. She had four children, but they had been removed from her care. She assaulted a previous boyfriend and had also been arrested for domestic violence. Camille went to prison in Ohio for breaking a woman's door and seriously injuring and assaulting her. Violent relationship. Camille and Marcel had a violent relationship. In one incident, she stabbed him with a knife and tended to the wound by herself. Marcel never reported the incident to authorities. Another time, she assaulted him and punctured his lung. Marcel never reported her to the police, but he did seek medical treatment. The final incident was when Camille hit Marcel in the head with a hammer. The authorities charged her with felonious assault and domestic violence. Camille was given a personal recognizance bond in order not to have contact with Marcel. But she continued to communicate with him anyway, and she used a fake name to visit him when he was hospitalized for suicidal ideation. At that time, on March 12th, a registered nurse had petitioned to have Marcel hospitalized because of mental illness so he could not harm himself or others, according to probate court records. She had said the patient reports that he could not go on and had a plan to end his life. Later, Camille picked him up from a substance abuse treatment program and was drinking alcohol, which was prohibited as a condition of her bond. Camille's bond was amended and she was arrested and put back in jail in April. But she was released on May 9th and the case was dismissed when Marcel refused to press charges against her. There cannot be a case unless witnesses are willing to participate in the process. When released, Camille went straight to Marcel's apartment. The murder. On May 18th, just nine days later, Camille murdered Marcel in a fit of explosive anger. Loud sounds of fighting and items being thrown made a neighbor call 911. Upon arrival to Camille and Marcel's home, police officers found the home in complete disarray. The room was destroyed with smashed furniture, a broken floor lamp, a bloody knife, and a bloody frying pan. The respondent officers noted that Camille had slurred speech and was covered in Marcel's blood. Meanwhile, Marcel had been beaten and stabbed to death. 
He had been stabbed 11 times. Marcel's torso was cut open with a knife. Camille did not have any injuries. The charges and arrest. Camille was immediately arrested at the scene and charged with open murder shortly after. Open murder is a combination of first and second degree murder and the judge or jury can determine the appropriate degree based on the evidence. The trial, Camille's defense. Camille claimed self-defense in Marcel's death because she thought he was an intruder or an attacker. She said she awoke from sleep at the sound of breaking glass. She said the house was pitch black and she couldn't see, so she grabbed a floor lamp and started swinging it at the intruder. She was able to grab a knife and use it on the intruder until she knocked him down. Camille says she found out that she had killed Marcel after she turned on the lights. She said she called 911 immediately. Camille blamed Marcel for the fight, saying that he had a drug problem and was an angry, hostile drunk. She said he went to church on Sundays, but the rest of the time it was just crack and alcohol and abuse. The prosecution. The prosecution tore down Camille's claim of self-defense. There is no way Camille would have been able to misidentify Marcel because he would have called out her name and cried for help when he was being stabbed 11 times. She would have recognized his voice. Camille claimed that she only hit Marcel three times, but he had 11 stab wounds. The prosecutor showed the bloody frying pan that was used in the attack. Prosecutors pointed out that Camille was the only one who had been arrested for domestic violence multiple times before the murder, not Marcel. The sentence. During the sentencing hearing, Camille showed no remorse over the killing of Marcel. The yeah, trial, the way I was portrayed, everything, mostly everything was lies. There was a little bit of truth, but mostly I was convicted off the of lies. Marcel's family read a victim letter to Camille in court. Family members who got a chance to address the court today would beg to differ. I remember the cries of help that he screamed as you plunged that knife in and out of his body. She rolled her eyes and started laughing. The judge was infuriated by her behavior and remarked that it was one of the worst cold-blooded murders he had ever seen. You gutted him like a fish in that apartment too. You were relentless. You stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed until he was dead. I agree with the family. I hope you die in prison as well. You know, if this was a death penalty state, you'd be getting the chair. You gutted him in that apartment like a fish. You were relentless. You stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed until he was dead. Yes, that is what Judge John McVean said. Camille was convicted of first degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The defense attorney appealed the conviction and approximately two years later, the Michigan Court of Appeals in a unanimous decision upheld Gamet's conviction. Do you think the judge overreacted? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think.